uh, getting the right fit. So the goal would be to just tackle a couple of those questions as we get Mike in here. Hopefully our connections work um, this week. Hey, Mike, what's up, bud? Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you, my friend? I'm good. Did I miss anything yet? Uh, no, I was just talking about shoes. Just saying. I figured I'd sit back here with all the shoes since we're talking about footwear today. I like that. You know? I want to I ask you some questions today. That sounds like I love it. To turn the tables, you know? Turn the tables. I don't, I don't know if I can replace the, the host with the most, but I'll do my best. Oh, I'm sure you can. <laughs> I'm but, sure um, can. Yeah, what's up? What kind of questions you got? Fire away, my friend. So here are my thoughts. So, you know, you guys are right down the street, and you, your, a lot of your customers are online. Yep. <laughs> yeah. You, you okay there? Yeah, yeah, just a little tumble. Took a little tumble. All right. Um, so we get, like, common questions that um, come up a lot. So I figured yeah. maybe we can – talk about some of those questions and answer them and then whoever wants to listen will be able to get those answers before they even ask us the questions right that's a great idea right save some time right. efficiency so, yeah so this is the question i get all the time mm -hmm. is what brand of shoe is best for me oh what a good that is a great question right and then i answer in one of two ways i'm like mm -hmm. well you can't re don't really go by the brand Mm -hmm. um, but I said, what you need to do is go get a really good um, um, sizing and shoe fit assessment. And then I send yep. them right down the street to you guys. Yes, yes, yes. So how would you answer that question when they walk into your store and say, what brand is best for me? So the way I answer that question every single time, and it's something that I get so often, it's like unbelievable. And sometimes I'll get actually doctors or coaches that recommend like one brand for like yep. all of their athletes or all of their uh, patients. And I, I have such a tough time with that. Um, but anyway, so the way I answer it is the one that fits is the best brand. So every brand has different fake feet that they build their shoe around. Uh, they call them a last, but it's basically just a fake foot. They're all different shapes. That's why some brands fit wide, some brands fit narrow, some fit deep, and some fit shallow. So I always answer that question with the one that fits. Perfect. Yeah. I like that. You know? Yeah. 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 So, all right. So someone, you, you, you go through that, and is there... Is there issues or a lot of problems in the shoe fitting process that you might come across? Um, yeah, sometimes people people sometimes they got tricky feet, man. They get they they're tough to nail did, down. Did you, did you say they have stinky feet? Uh, tricky, tricky feet, not stinky. Tri oh, feet. They, said, they said stinky. My bad. <laughs> so, that can be an issue too sometimes, but. You know, tricky. Give me an example of what, what, what's a tricky foot. Like, give me. So, give me so yeah. So, what can be an issue sometimes is that, like, we when we measure someone's foot, we're able to measure the length, and we can measure the width of their foot, but it's it's hard to get um, a measurement of the volume, like how much depth there is to their foot. Like, you can look and say, like, okay, that person has a really high instep. Um, but there's no like exact measurement for it. So that yep. can be kind of an issue when we're trying to dial in the right fit. Um, but there's some key things that we look for to make sure that a shoe fits properly. Um, so in terms of the length and the width, the length we wanna make sure in a running shoe, we have like a little bit of room in the front of the shoe for runners in particular. Yeah, I've got, I've got a question. Yeah, go for it. Before you go on to the second point, sure. Do you do you find when people come into you guys for the first time and get an actual good fitting that they're wearing their shoes too small? Uh, yes. Yeah, they typically are wearing a shoe that's too small, um, and it's because when they when, so like if I ask someone what their shoe size is, they usually give me like a dress shoe size. So every Everybody who comes in, we typically go up a half size 
from whatever their dress shoe is. Um, and I think people, uh, you know, people put on a shoe that actually like fits and they're like, wow, you know, my toes aren't like jammed up in the front of the shoe. Um, a lot of times if you end up getting a shoe that is too small, then, you know, your toenails get all bruised up and yes. uh, sometimes they can fall gross. off, you know, yeah. they can fall off. And yeah, I've seen, I've, and seen many, yeah. I've seen many, many 10 toed humans with like seven toenails. <laughs> Yeah, it's not good, man. It's not good. Yeah. We want to keep your toenails on your toes. Yeah. Did you know? you, have you ever seen the documentary Running on the Sun? I have not, no. It's either Running on the Sun or Running to the Sun, but it follows a bunch of these ultra marathoners really yep. quickly. And one guy had his toenails surgically removed because he couldn't stop getting the black toenail. So he had them all surgically removed. Yeah. That, sounds like the, that sounds like the worst thing it just um, his, his toes were like little cinch sacks with no. It was weird. Oh, anyway, just, I digress. Yeah, change professions. I think at that point, <laughs> right. my goodness. Um, but yeah, so half a thumbs width of space in the front, yep. um, and then the width. Basically, you just want to make sure that you're kind of touching both sides of the shoe at the widest point, so the ball of your foot. Um, you want hitting both sides of the shoe without any extra like material you can pinch off. Or, and you don't want to make sure, I mean, you do want to make sure that you're not hanging over the midsole. A lot of the shoes, what they'll do is they'll kind of flare out the white stuff or the midsole under your foot. You yeah. want to be able to look down and see that white stuff. If you look down and you can't see it, then your shoe is a little too narrow for you. Gotcha. Is that a, uh, I, would, I would think that would not be as common of a problem, but I've never seen uh, it. Yeah, it's not that common of an issue, but like if you are someone who has a wider foot, then you might need to go to like a wide width. Um, so if you were if you were fitting, let's say Fred Flintstone, yes, he might potentially need to go to like a wide width. Yeah, and as Wilma, his wife, very very narrow foot. Right, two A, two A width on her for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so that's the length and that's the width but the depth gotcha. remember we cannot measure the depth so yeah. the thing that you want to see <clears throat> on your shoe when you look down is some some nice railroad tracks right so those laces you want them nice and parallel um, from the bottom to the top gotcha if they cinch together at the top of the shoe. Like if they're really close together at the top and really kind of wide at the bottom, then your shoe has too much volume for your foot. So it's kind if, of blousey, right? Right, a little blousey, a lot of stuff you can, like a lot of extra material. If yeah, yeah. it's the opposite, if it's kind of close to the bottom and wide at the top, then the shoe's a little too shallow for you. And then what you might find is your heels popping out of the back the entire yeah. time. You're yeah. running. So nice and parallel, just like railroad tracks. Yeah. You know what's funny is I could attribute some of the injuries that I'm seeing mm -hmm. with some of the poor um, shoe selection. Yeah. With, with what you're talking about. So we get people that come in, they get a lot of tendon issues on the top of their foot. And sometimes mm -hmm. they're, they have too much volume of a foot for the shoe, and they're lacing it super tight, and they're doing the yep. loop lock, and they're actually irritating their extensor tendons on the top of the foot pretty simple ah. thing to fix because we send you guys to get the right shoe fit you know we might right. have to do some treatment for the inflammation um and then you get other people who are swimming in their shoes and they're just moving all over the place and it's not right. they don't have a good um a good relationship with their shoe <laughs> right they're just all over the place and not in good contact <laughs> with it <laughs> right right yeah and that can lead to blisters and like some other issues where like they're trying to like stabilize inside of the shoe so like yep. sometimes folks will get like calf tightness or like Achilles issues just because they're like their toes are like grabbing onto the shoe so they don't slide around in there and all yeah. that tightness kind of travels up the leg. So so that's something we hear uh, from some of our customers and just getting the right fit yeah. can help solve that issue for sure. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. So let's go talk about shoe type. And like sure. supports, all right, because you know, 10 years ago when um, Born to Run came out, everyone came mm -hmm. to you guys looking for the Vibram Five Fingers and wanted to go minimalist. 
and they wanted yeah. to get rid of the they wanted to get rid of the Brooks Beast and make yep. that switch. Um, some of them might have been okay for us. Some of them might not. So, mm -hmm. really quickly, where so I know when someone needs some support, and we'll send them to you guys. But where does the support in the shoe come from? And then on the opposite end, when you get someone in like a minimalist shoe, like how how do you help determine if that person is that, if that's a right decision for the person? Sure. So most of the support comes from the midsole. So the that kind of white stuff under your foot. Um, yep. What a lot of shoe companies used to do, and some of them still do, is like if someone overpronates, they'll put like a pre-compressed foam or like a um, plastic bit underneath their arch area. So it's much firmer on the medial side of the shoe, softer on the lateral side. So when they land, it's soft on the outside there, but when they kind of rotate inward, it just, they hit that harder material and it kind of bumps it up. Yep. Um, so that support piece is typically right in the midsole and usually underneath the arch area directly or a little bit kind of closer to the heel to kind of start that process a little earlier on in the gait cycle there. Um, it, but, Eric, Eric, can I interrupt real quick? So with can. that, like all the different companies have different names for this, right? They'll call it like the roll bar or the anti-pronation bridge. And it's usually like a solid, like either plastic or like a gray or foam that you'll see inside of that versus the, like a full white midsole, correct? Correct, yeah. So what can be tricky about that too is like, they do all have like different names for it, like Duo Max and like you said, Roll Bar and like everybody's got something. But hmm. what's also tricky is in less expensive shoes, like so most of our shoes retail for like $120-ish. But you can go to like a Kohl's and you'll buy a shoe for like 60 bucks and don't do that. But if you do, what you'll see is some of that gray stuff on the shoe. But to the companies to save money, they're just painting that on there. So yeah. it might look like it has support, but it does not. So yeah. what's important is the density of it. So if you see like a gray material, a marble. Some people use, some companies use marble or like a plastic. Just check the density of it. If it's firmer than the white stuff, then Just push good. on it, right? Just push on. So if it's harder, yeah. good. But what I've liked and a lot of our customers have liked is, is kind of this move towards support without putting harder materials underneath your arch. So companies like Brooks, and Hoka have kind of shifted some of their support to to like a cradle, right? So you're inside of a midsole as opposed to on top of it. Um, so it's basically building up a wall on the medial side of the foot and then also on the lateral side of the foot. So the goal is to kind of guide you down the middle without injecting a firmer material underneath your arch. Because some folks have found that that harder material can be like intrusive like they can feel it poking up into their arch so by yep. just molding that support into the midsole and cradling the foot um, it provides support because when that foot tries to rotate inward hits up against that sidewall and it kind of wants to correct um, yep. so it's supportive but it's not hard underneath the foot yeah. it makes it how, how, how new is that trend so uh, I think Hoke has been doing it for a couple of years now um, yeah. in their Bondi. Um, and then Brooks started it maybe like three years ago. They switched to this system they call Guide Rails um, yeah. as opposed to like they used to call it DBR, whatever that means. But um, the Guide Rail system is a little bit less intrusive, a little softer, but still provides a good amount of support. They say to think of it like bumpers at a bowling alley. You know, you pop those bumpers up so you don't go in the gutters. It's kind of the same deal. It's guiding you down the center of your foot. Gotcha. So for, I know we can't um, generalize because there's so many different feet. But yeah. if someone without many issues is that, but they need support, is that support enough, do you think? Or what do you guys, if you, yeah. you're watching them, yeah, so if you're watching them walk or doing whatever testing you guys are doing, and you put them mm -hmm. in that, do you think that's enough to correct it or do you have another um, option or idea for them? Uh, typically, like 
most people who need support are okay with that level of support. So like it's, we classify it as like a moderate stability shoe. Um, and it kind of fits that mold. So usually for us, I mean, most of our sales are more neutral cushion shoes, but there is a good amount of folks who need some support. I'd say that's kind of the next largest category. And then you have folks who need like a tremendous amount of support. Um, the, what do you call them? Alabama floor suckers. Is that it? That's yeah. it. Yeah. So if you have Alabama floor suckers, then we might put you in something, you know, a little bit more substantial, but most people who need support can get away with that, like moderate stability shoe. Awesome. Um, I think you answered all my questions. What else? Oh, that's that's good. Yeah, so, you're 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 good, man. You're you answered uh, and to the point. You know, I you don't tried. go off and you don't go off in tangents like I do. And Thirty-five <laughs> minutes later, you're like, dude, we gotta go. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. And also, I'm not gonna mention the word trigger point to this week. Oh, all right, good. We'll edit that part out. That you, where you just it. mentioned trigger point. Pretend, yeah, but, edit that out. Yeah. I'm not oh, gonna do it. Cool. Right. right. Awesome. Can I ask you a quick question? Yeah. Um, in terms of like patients that come in, are there certain so there's certain um clients that you might get, are there any in particular that like the issue is either like solved by just getting a shoe or it can be like greatly like greatly increase their chance of um like successful recovery by getting the right type of shoe like what type of injuries do you see where that can help good question so i'll preface that question by saying um a lot of people like to blame the shoe right mm -hmm. um, yep. and sometimes it absolutely is and i'll get into a couple examples of that but most of the time it's the the thing that's in the shoe that's more of the problem than the actual right. shoe right yep. but as long yep. as they're in the right type so an example of that would be if i see someone who was told they're an overpronator but i don't mm -hmm. know who but they have a really high arch it's a really rigid foot that doesn't pronate and doesn't absorb shock yeah they're in a brooks beast if brooks yep. is still making that or if for those yep. who don't know what the brooks beast is it's more probably one of the most controlling shoes it's basically a, a a brick of a shoe right it is yep yeah so if you've got a brick of a foot and you're in now in a brick of a shoe you're not absorbing shock very well you're not attenuating mm -hmm. the stresses of running so you might see an increase in stress injuries like stress fractures to metatarsals uh, lower mm -hmm. leg even up into the hip so that could definitely make things worse whereas if we could get them out of that type of shoe Mm -hmm. teach their body how to pronate a little bit which is absorbing the shock put them more maybe even some one of these guided systems if they've been so used to the brooks because they've been running like that for years maybe yeah. they, they can't we can't get rid of all the support right away so maybe there's like over the next three sneaker selections we kind of work our way down to more of a stability shoe yeah. um so that would be something that would make the shoe, shoe selection would make it worse right mm -hmm. and then the opposite side of that if you have an alabama floor sucker which is a really flat foot that just over pronates and there's mm -hmm. no stability in there whatsoever. We need to look at orthotics or a good shoe. So being in something with either the rails or a Brooks beast will help their recovery, especially if they're in there for like, yeah. like a, a, a posterior tibial tendonitis, which is a tendon on the inside that's trying to hold that arch up, but it just yep. not doing a good job. Putting them in the right shoe could actually take some load off of that tendon and allow it to heal as they're just kind of walking around even before we get them back to running. Never mind when we get them back to running, it could prevent that from coming back by getting them in the right shoe. Right, right. Yeah. Now, have you found, I, I realized I didn't answer one of your questions before, where, we, where you asked about like what type of person could get into like a minimalist shoe. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so the way I would answer it is pretty, like you can work your way into a minimalist shoe, like you were just saying, like work your way down over the course of a couple of, um shoe selection so yeah what we always tried to say with folks who are looking to do the minimalist thing is start with like no more than 10 percent of your weekly mileage and then like gradually build up um yeah. 
what you probably found and we found was people didn't do that and they just jumped right in and stress fractures, metatarsal issues and all sorts of problems popped yeah. up. It was um, great for business. I can imagine, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We uh we tried we avoided that vibram thing as best yeah. we could. Um and cuz we always find that when it comes to shoes, the truth usually is like in the middle there somewhere. Yeah. As with most things, you know? Yeah. Somewhere in the middle. Right, yeah. you know? Politics, yeah. life, footwear. Truth's in the middle, baby. <laughs> That's it. Diet. Maybe. Diet. Well, all in the middle. Right. Exactly. You know, with moderation. Exactly. You can eat ice exactly. cream. You can eat ice cream, but yeah. in moderation. Don't eat all the ice cream. Just just a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. All right, <laughs> cool. Well, I, th right. I think that's helpful. And, and really quick, like I said, I know we probably have to end, but um, I'm so fortunate that you guys are close. And I don't know if all mm -hmm. the listeners are local and they probably know you in, in the store, which is awesome. But there, are, mm -hmm. I know people all over the country, therapists, that they don't have a good shoe store to go to. You know, like right. I used to know a lot more about sneakers and and um, shoe selection, but because you guys are down the road, I just send them your way and mm -hmm. tell them drive right. 1.2 miles down this road, and you'll see it on the left hand side, and, <laughs> right? And there, uh, which is awesome. So yeah. Um, oh, I had one more, one more quick thing. You mentioned the Coles. Oh. Is it yeah. true that most of the, the the running shoe companies don't? allow the big box stores to sell their higher end shoes um yeah so it uh, depends on the company so there are certain companies that are um making shoes that are run specialty specific yeah, um yeah. but uh i think you know they're all companies that are trying to make a lot of money so <laughs> you can you can find some of these shoes in big box stores i just think sometimes yep. the issue becomes like getting the right one you know yeah, yeah yeah and because like we didn't touch on it but every year these shoes are updated and they're tweaked just a little bit so they might fit slightly different they might feel slightly different and if you go to like a dick sporting goods or you just like click reorder on whatever brooks.com you might get the update and go like what the what is this this yeah, isn't yeah. the shoe i usually run in so right Folks like us, like a run specialty store, wherever it is, we know the changes they make. Um, I mean, the owner of our store makes these things. He works for Brooks designing these shoes. So yeah, we yeah. have kind of an inside track as to like what's changed. Um, so if there are any issues that pop up, we're better to like kind of guide you in the right direction, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, well, I think, I personally think it's great that if they do save some select higher end models for the specialty stores because mm -hmm. it's just going to help you guys continue to survive and thrive in a <laughs> click in a point and click um, shopping experience that everyone's looking for these days right right, right. yes yeah. and so yeah. um what's nice though now is we have the option to point and click right. so if so you, you go to our website world. you can you can buy it directly from us and then if there are any issues we're there to answer your questions for you and help yeah. make the process of either shifting it to a new shoe or like yeah. um, if you need to return it, we are actually humans who you you can interact with. Yeah, yeah. and nice. hopefully and hopefully you may have had that customer in the store at least once for a proper shoe fit. Yes, right? exactly. So then they've got a little more of a shoe education to know what they're looking for, then they can point and mm -hmm. click maybe for the next one or two shoes and then they might need to come in for a refit like every year type of thing. Right. 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 Yeah. What you guys need is like an annual, like we, we go for our annual with the doctors. You need to go for an annual checkup with your, with your therapist. You need to go for an annual checkup with your local running shoe provider. And then you can know right. you got a, lots of prevention going on there. That's all yeah. proactive. It, man. Prevention. That's what it's all about. You know, Although yeah. that might put you out of business, right? So maybe. Yeah, that could be bad. So not everyone <laughs> prevents. <laughs> right. We'll stay in the middle again. It's not all right in the middle. Yeah. 
some, some, enough some prevention. Reaction but, might be needed. Yeah, but not so much. Right. I hear no. you. No. No. <laughs> right. Cool. Well, that was All good. Right, well, this has I'm, been fun. Yeah, it was good. We didn't talk about injuries and medical stuff too much, so that was good. Yeah, yeah. Maybe next week we get back into that. We'll see. We'll, we'll get back. We'll get back to that word that begins with a T. Um, we'll talk about more of those those T points. Oh, yeah. next time. <laughs> right, right, All right, brother. Right. Cool. All right. Nice we'll talking see you, to you, man. See ya. Yeah, have a great day, man. You too. Bye.